it's uh, one of the downsides, I guess, to not using digital instruments. I, I suppose I could just use some samples and, and just get going that way. But I like, uh, I like using real instruments when I can. So, test. All right, so we see that there's two mics. There's a 635A and the SM7, which is a little soft. Okay, so we should now be able to hear some Bowron, and this is a particularly large one. It's about two feet in diameter, so it has a nice low tone, and um, we're just going to try and add some quarter notes. And I realized you guys weren't able to hear the mics on their straight input. You were just hearing the, the one mic. So you won't hear them play back unless I change those real quick. OK, so now you guys probably hear what I'm hearing, which is uh, some crazy layering of my voice. But we now have some, some drums. We have eight bars. going to listen to what the two um, mics sound like. So the SM7 was actually a little bit soft. Yes, I said the SM7 was a little bit soft, but I don't think you guys heard me. Um, We will try that again. <laughs> so this should be just the SM7. And I'm not hearing it at all. That's really soft. Although I am happy with, I am happy with the sound of that second <clears throat> microphone, so it's probably going to be enough. Um, in a lot of situations where I need to make the drums really big, I would often um, I would often let their um, sorry ah, uh, <laughs> with with to make the drums large, I would often put them in a very large reverb setting but in this case we're going to be outdoors and so reverb and reflections are probably not the most appropriate element um, because I don't think you want to have an indoor funeral march it could in theory go through a cave but that would be or I mean a canyon but that would be something we add later um, Sorry, someone was talking to me. I can't, I don't quite understand what they're trying to say though. So, um, anyway, I, uh, I'm not totally happy with my timing on this. So I'm actually going to do some, I'm going to bounce this down into a stereo file. And I'm going to take it into my friend, 
live because uh, it's just awesome that way. And I'll, I'll use that to sort of correct myself. And then if we decide that the tempo is too slow, uh, it will allow us to, to change it. Um, so I'm going to give myself just one beat so I know the timing. Chop off that tail just a little bit. Put a little fade. Merge that to itself. Okay. And um, so we will now export that. And I'm just going to create in my idea here, dog funeral march ideas. We'll just uh, create live exports. So I have a place to put anything I put in live, which I don't usually, you know, I, I like human performances whenever I can get them. Um, but I'm not necessarily the greatest drummer. And this is such a slow tempo. It's, it's a little hard to feel sometimes. Um, and so uh, you have to set up an aux to use, I'm going to use live on what's called rewire mode. So it's going to play in through a channel right here called live. So when I open it up, um, you'll see that it opens in as a rewire slave. So now if I play one program, the other one will play at the same time. And uh, you'll notice that this one is set to 45 BPM. This is Digital Performer, and when I flip over to Live, it's also set to 45 BPM. Um, and now I just grab my file right here. I'm going to drop it in place. We actually set it so that there's one beat beforehand, but it thinks it's actually twice. Live tries to analyze the tempo based on what happens. Uh, it did a good job, but guessed about half this tempo. So I'm going to set it to 45 BPM, set it in place. And then what we can do um, is uh, I'm going to start it from here. And of course, it ruined my tempo. We're at 45, right? So we'll, s we'll still keep it one beat. And then we'll loop eight bars of this so that we can just kind of keep it going. And then if we later on, we decide that we really want to, um, to do more, you know, if we want to change things up, we can do that. But for now, we have eight bars of, of individual hits. And I will now um, do what they call quantizing. And I'm just going to quantize. And it, I like to I like to quantize to the current grid whenever possible. Um, I like to be zoomed out as much as possible. And, and then when I, when I quantize, um, I'm mostly getting hits on the beats. I actually don't like that it's trying to, um, there's there's some reverberation that it thinks are transients. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all of those so that it's really only uh, assigning the beat. And so now when we listen with our click, we'll see 
but it's really perfectly in time now with very minimal amount of change to the audio. Um, in this case, I might actually... S oh, you guys probably can't hear the click. Oh, I didn't think about that. Hmm. I'm guessing that it would be useful for you to hear the click, so I will set that up as well. Okay, you guys should probably have click now. Oh, of course you guys don't hear drums. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not used to working this way. You should now hear click and drums. Well, that was kind of silly on my part. Okay, can you guys still hear me? I think I, I messed something up. <laughs> I just want to make sure. You should now hear both click and drums. <laughs> All right. Sorry about the confusion there. Um, again, not used to working this way, so it's a little weird for me. Okay, so as I was saying, we have live now playing in time, and it's looping, and uh, I might just let it go for a bit. Um, I'm going to save this session. And what I always like to do is I like to save it in the same folder with the same name, dash LV, so I know it's a live session. And then um, in Digital Performer, they have this kind of cool thing called a clipping. And a clipping lets me link any, any object anywhere on the computer into it. So what I can do is I can actually take my live session file and drop it in here. And now whenever I open the Digital Performer project, I can just double click on this session right here and it will open the live file without seeking it. So that's always convenient little trick I like to use. Okay. I turn the, the click off now. The click is probably relatively quiet. But the, in ideally the the click will be something that we don't want to hear too much anyway so it'll come on and off as we go um, I think what we want now is we actually want a second layer of, of Balron so I'm gonna use a, a smaller Balron, Balron now um, Set it so you guys can hear. And I'm going to record again. I'm actually going to turn up the SM7 a little more because this one has a different tone. So we're going to try and get something else. <clears throat> so our second bow run. Our second bow run sounds like this. It's a much smaller one, higher pitched. Um, and I'm gonna use a harder mallet so it gives us a little bit sharper tone. Um, but for now, I'm actually gonna just keep doing quarter notes, but we'll do another eight bars or so. So here we go. <clears throat> 